Welcome back troglodytes to Would You Rock or Not. Today we're looking at a listing on eBay that gets sent to me quite often because it's just a crazily decked out Les Paul. Alright, so let's dig in here and look at the headstock first. It appears you have a flamed maple veneer instead of like your typical black holly veneer. You've got gold tuners with binding surrounding the headstock, but not just binding, abalone inlay as well. And let's take a look at this truss rod cover. It's apparently 24 karat gold plated, so I mean that's the real stuff, not your usual cheap gold plating. And you have carvings in it in a vine pattern. This is just the headstock. Wait till you see the rest of the guitar. Wow! It's, there's so much going on on this guitar. I'm sure this guitar crosses the line between tasteful and overdone for many people at this point. But this guitar appears to be based on the Les Paul Florentine custom. It's kind of like a Les Paul custom, but it's semi what a 335 as well, because you have the F holes and it's kind of chambered out for those. So this one, we have the two-piece flamed maple top, an ebony fretboard that was carved up for all those inlays, and just so much fanciness going on. This one kind of has the Mary Ford thing going on as well, with not only a pick guard, but also an arm guard on the side of the guitar. Because look at these intricate vine patterns on the two guards on the guitar. And then if we zoom in on the bridge and tailpiece, you can see they also have the vine engravings. And if that wasn't enough for you, look at these pickup covers! Even they have the engravings. And once again, just like the headstock, you've got the abalone inlay following the binding. But here's what I don't understand about this guitar. Flame top, 24 karat gold plated pieces. It's just extravagant but then you have plastic knobs. What is this? <laughs> plastic knobs? Why did they not do the 24 karat gold knobs? Now the 1994 Centennial Les Pauls and the other ones built for that year, they had gold knobs and people started to not like them because they would start to tarnish. So that's probably why they didn't do it. But I think visually, once you notice those, cheap plastic really kind of ruins the whole vibe of this guitar. If you're gonna go all out, you might as well go all out. But here is what I like about this guitar. I'm not a super fan of all the fancy stuff. Again, I think I could appreciate it better in person, but this is what makes this stand out to me. You have a relief carving on the back of the heel. Now, I'm sure this makes this guitar very uncomfortable to play in the higher fret regions, but this is just such a beautiful artwork piece. You pretty much don't ever see this on a Les Paul because of the obvious playability reasons. The one production guitar that I can think of that has a similar relief carving is the Snake Pit Les Paul, and that was on the front of the guitar. But I am very glad that they did this on the back because I feel like the whole back of the guitar is a lot more tasteful than the front. They could have went all out and put a flamed maple cap on the back. They could have done it on the sides, gave it a flamed neck, but they didn't. So before you say this guitar is distasteful, only the front is super blinged out. When we zoom in here, you just have some very nice, simple mahogany wood grain. Now that's a really nice mahogany back, and they did do the engravings on the gold back plates as well as having the abalone inlay surrounding the binding. But here's another close-up of these back plates. It looks like it says Bella Voce, which means beautiful voice in Italian. There's also a Chicago-based choir named that. So in the end, this is a really crazily decked out Les Paul Florentine with just so much going on. However, once you get to the backside, it's more tame and a little bit more tasteful. I'm not really sure how I feel about this guitar. If you were going to display this, you would need one that kind of spins it around so you can see the relief carving on the back. But then you've got like two different guitars going on, crazily over the top and simplistic but still fancy. 
Perhaps the overall theme of this guitar is the back side is portraying a woman and the front side portrays her glorious voice. Perhaps that's why they named it Bella Voce. The only question left, would you rock this Les Paul Florentine or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below, and regardless of how you feel about this instrument, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.